Amen. Amen. And let the church say amen. amen. I said let the church say amen. amen. It's good to be here. I have missed you. I have missed you. I have thought of you every time I'm watching television in the morning, getting ready. Oh, God, at that 5.30 in the morning, forsaken hour, getting ready to come to <laughs> beat that Atlanta traffic to school. And I start getting ready, and I'm in the shower. And, and they go, we'll be broadcasting live from Orlando. In the, and I'm like, no! <laughs> It's a beautiful 78 degrees. No, Lord. I was telling Pastor, I have to shut that TV off because I just start to cry. They lied to me about Atlanta. Oh, it don't get cold here. Oh, no, this isn't like up north. They lie. It'll get cold, and then they'll tell me, oh, this is cold. This is going to get. Then it'll get colder. Oh, and then one day it started raining and it was like spray all around you. Uh, you ever seen that type of rain? It like. <laughs> and I looked at a buddy of mine. And I said, you are a liar. <laughs> this is cold and I'm freezing and my hands hurt and my ears are about to fall off. You lie to me. <laughs> but it's good to be here. I have missed you. I have loved you. And I'm just really blessed to be here this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm blessed to be able to worship with you on this victorious weekend in which equality in marriage has been approved in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. Thank you. So it's time for me to go up to the mountains of Puerto Rico and sit on the hillside and wait for my husband in Jesus. name. <laughs> but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be here with you. I'm blessed to be able to worship with you. Even in these trying times that we're going through, I stand in Jesus' name with my black sisters and brothers this morning. I stand with you. We were in Atlanta when that news came to us. And I can't tell you how painful it was to look at people I love and I worship with and study with, to look at their faces and the pain they bore that morning when we got that horrendous news. And as a brown man, I was angry. As a brown man, I was angry, and I sat there, and I said, oh, my God, this reminds me of when I was a kid back in Chicago, and these scary days would happen to us. I was reminded, and then when I, I got home and I turned on the TV, and, and, and the day of the court, when, that, when, the, when, when the woman stood up and said, I forgive you, I forgive you, I said, my Lord, that is truly a reflection of a Christ. That is truly a reflection of the God we love, because it's like, when things get hard and things become difficult and you just don't know what to do, you don't know where it comes from, but there's a grace that comes up. And when our president stood up, I love our president. When he stood up and started singing Amazing Grace, at first when I heard that pitch, I said, uh-oh. I said, Holy Ghost, help. Lord, he's in your house, God. Anoint the man of God. And then um, he caught the note really well, and he kept on singing. I was blessed. And I think it's an important message for us this morning as we look at our black sisters and brothers all across this country practicing the grace and the love of God. It becomes important to stand with them in solidarity. It's a time to get that crazy-looking flag down, I'll tell you right now. But that's just my personal political opinion. Go ahead, clap, please. You know, um, it's, it's just, but, but, but I'm grateful to the Lord that, uh, uh, that we have been able to stand with them. So my sisters and brothers, I stand with you in love uh, this morning. And I'm here to talk to you about Jesus. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm sitting in seminary and they're talking about Greek and Hebrew and I got no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> and we start doing exegesis. And when I first heard that, my professor say that word, I said, exo what? Exegesis. And I said, that sounds like there's no Jesus in that. You're exiting out Jesus. No, no, that's not what it means. It's an exegetical review. And we started digging, digging in the scriptures and studying the theology and the science. I said, oh, my God is great. My God is big. My God is wonderful. So I'm having a great time in seminary, but I do miss you. I try to get Candler to move down here, but they refuse. They said, Emory University, I've been here for 120 years. We're not leaving. 
Uh, so I'm there for two more years thinking about you and praying for you. But I want to bring you the word this morning and talk to you about this man. This man who was born blind. This man who was born cursed. This man who was considered cursed by God because he could not see, because he had a deformity, because he was different. This man who had to live his life daily in this condition. I want you to come with me to his house this morning. I want you to come with me to the house of the blind man who his whole entire life had been blind and has not been able to see. Who was born cursed. Who was born because something was wrong with him, they said. I want you to come with me to his house this morning. Let's go and watch him wake up in the morning. And as he wakes up in the morning, the first thing he feels is pain in his stomach because he has to eat. You see, he's blind, and in his day, there was no income if you were blind. There was no way of working. There was no way of eating. There was no support programs to help you. And he gets up in the morning, and he, and he wakes up, and he feels the hunger. And the first thing he says is, I have to go to my spot and beg in order that hopefully throughout the day someone will give me something and I'll be able to eat. So he gets up and he, and he starts to feel the walls around him. And he's feeling the wall and he finds his stick and he starts hitting the pavement, hitting the ground, hitting the wall so that he doesn't fall. And he has a count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Till he gets to the number of steps which is his begging spot. And he sits there and he starts to beg for his survival. Now coming along the road, there's this man who they call Jesus. And he's walking down the road and, and Jesus is walking with his disciples, the scripture says. Now this day is filled with questions and challenges that had his disciples wondering about him. It was a confusing day because you see prior to this event at the temple, in Jerusalem, the religious leaders were challenging Jesus. And a big, big theological debate broke out. And Jesus was debating with the Pharisees. And, the, and actually, at this point of his ministry, Jesus is just annoyed with the Pharisees. And he stands up and he responds to them and he says, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. And he saw it and was glad. And then they said, you are not even 50 years old, and you claim to have seen Abraham? And he said, very, very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. And the word of I am resounded through that temple, and it shook through them Pharisees and them Sadducees. It shook through them because, you see, the word I am is a holy word, meaning Yahweh. It was God's name for God's people. And to even mention the word was to bow in holy reverence and silence because you were not even able to utter that word. And yet this Jesus stood up in the temple and stood up and said, I am, calling himself God further irritating them, and the place went crazy, and on top of the place going crazy, his disciples freaked out. <laughs> Have you ever been with a friend that just lost it? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you hanging out with someone and they do something crazy? Oh my God. Esta nena está loca. This girl's crazy. Right? Some guy does something crazy, you're like, oh my God, I'm not with him, I don't know him. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, amen, it's happened to me. Well, that's what was going on with the disciples. They, Jesus stood up and said, before Abraham was, I am. And Peter was like, oh, my God. <laughs> John was like, the Lord done gone, lost it. James was like, Ave Maria Purissima. <laughs> what is going on here? Nobody knew what was happening. They go, what did Jesus just say? Jesus just said, I am. No, no, he did. And yes, he did. <laughs> and, it, it, and it shook the whole place. And everybody was angry and they were enraged. And to, it's not part of the sermon, but to make the point, they tried to kill him. And they were raising up stones to kill him. And the scripture says Jesus walked right through them. It's not time yet. Halt that stone, baby boy. It's not time for me to die. I'm not dying now. And he came and he walked right through them. And so he's walking. And so I want you to picture this as Jesus is walking. His disciples are walking behind him like, 
<laughs> right? Like that shock look on your face, like he's crazy. And so they were filled with questions and they were filled with wondering as they're walking. And as they're walking, what they're doing is they're moving away from that scene where he just declared himself God. And they're moving towards the blind man. Now sitting there is the blind man who cannot see. And it was then that his disciples raise a theological question. And they ask, they look at the blind man and they're like, Lord, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Since you're God and you know all the answers, who sinned? Now, Jesus turned and he did what he's been doing all this time. He defies religion. He defies traditions. He defies the theology of his day. And he tears it apart. And he looks at them and says, neither. Huh? No, no. You see, the Bible says that. The scripture says that. But the law says that. And Jesus looks at them and says, neither. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. This has happened so that the glory of God may be seen through him. And once again, he's challenging them. Because you see, that doesn't fit in their political paradigm. It doesn't fit in their understanding of who God is. Now, Jesus, I asked you a simple question. And the question is, who sinned? And now you're telling me nobody. And I don't understand that because the Bible says that and the, and the script and all this is going through. And Jesus says, this has happened so that the glory of God can be seen him. And then all of a sudden, Jesus bends down and he picks up some dirt. And he spits on it. And they're like, oh, my Lord, now he really lost it. <laughs> and he starts to make mud. And then he goes and he starts to put the mud. Come on now, put the mud. What would you do someone put mud in your eye? He starts to put the mud on the blind man's eye. And the blind man is just sitting there minding his own business. He has no idea what is going on. He doesn't know what's happened at the temple. He doesn't know who the disciples are. He don't understand. He just wants a coin so he can eat. That's all he wants. And he feels someone getting closer, someone getting closer. Oh, good. I'm going to have me a piece of bread. I'm going to be able to get me some fish. Someone's getting closer. Someone's getting closer. And then... What are you doing? <laughs> get your hands off me. Get your, get what, what? And you see, can you just picture this? Jesus is like, stay still, boy. <laughs> stay still. Stay still. And the man's probably like, ah, if he's anything like me, the man's like, ah, like really freaking out that somebody's putting something on his eyes because he can't see. And then Jesus grabs him and says, Go to the pool and wash. And the man's like, no kidding. <laughs> like, like, what am I supposed to do? You put dirt in my eye. I can feel the mud. And so he starts to get the stick and tch, 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 tch. let me see, the pool was 45 this way, one, two, three, four, five. And he gets to the pool and he starts to wash. And he washes. And as he washes for the first time in his life, for the first time in his existence, sisters and brothers, for the first time, his eyes open up and he's able to see. And he looks and says, I can see. I can see. I can see. Now, the people standing around him were like, isn't that the blind man that used to sit by the temple and beg? Isn't this the blind man that used to sit with the And some would say, yes, that's him. And others would say, no, that's not him. He just looks like him. And then the others would say, no, that's him. I know that's him because he always got that same cloak on. That's him. No, that's not him. That's probably his cousin or something that looks like him. And they're having this debate, and he turns around and now he can see. Can you imagine how beautiful that is? Can you imagine how beautiful that is? Now I can see. And he turns around and he goes, I am, hallelujah, the man. I am he. And they said, how did this happen? And he says, the man whom they call Jesus 
made mud, put it on my eyes, and told me to go wash. And now I can see. Now I can see. And they said, where is he at? And he turned around and looked and said, I don't know. I don't know. But I can see. Now this testimony, his testimony of standing up there was really new for these people and it's controversial because on top of that it's the sabbath and you see according to the law according to the bible according to the scripture you're not supposed to work that day and they consider that labor especially when he went to the pool especially when he made the mud and put it in his eyes so they start to say the the the, the, the debate begins to rise so they have to come now to the pharisees and when they take him to the Pharisees, the Pharisees are sitting there on a side room and they're having this conversation and, and, and they're meeting with each other and, and someone, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Pharisee, uh, uh, there seems to be a situation developing out there, sir. Uh, what happened now? Well, sir, apparently, uh, you remember that man, Jesus? The one who claimed to be I am, the one who claimed to be God, the one you can't stand? Uh, well, do you, re well, you remember him? Yeah, I remember him. What do he do now? Well, sir, um, apparently he's healed a blind man. He what? Apparently he's healed a blind man who couldn't see it. Now the guy can see, and he's like shouting out there. Uh, he's like the Holy Ghost has fallen, and he's full of joy, but that's a separate sermon. Um, he's, like, he's like out there talking about it, and everybody's like having this debate because you see it's the Sabbath, and you know, you're know you not supposed to heal anybody, and nothing's supposed to be happening. And, and so the Pharisees kind of look and say, bring me that man. And so... They bring him. And the Pharisees look at this man and say, what happened? And he says, the man whom they call Jesus made some mud. He put it on my eyes. He told me to go and wash. And now I can see. This enraged the Pharisees. And they declare, this is not of God. There you go, theological opinion. There you go. Someone came up with an answer. Someone read the Bible. They know everything. Now we all have to listen to him. Now we all have to follow him. In rage, they declare, this is not of God. What do you have to say about him? And the man just smiled and said, he's a prophet. Because I can see. And they became enraged with him. And you see, they try to shut his testimony down. They want to make him look crazy. They want to prove that they're right and he's wrong. So they come up with this idea that he's not the man. He's faking it. And this is one of Jesus' tricks. And so they go and they send for his parents. And mom's at home making the tortilla. <laughs> and making the cafe bustelo. And she's just there in the home cooking. And there's a knock on the door. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Are you, the, are you the mother of the blind guy? Uh-oh, what do you do? Well, uh, the Pharisees, who? The Pharisees want to see you. They want to talk to you about your son. What happened? I'm not at liberty to discuss it with you right now, ma'am. There's some legal proceedings going on in the court. And I am not at liberty to speak. And she goes and gets the husband. Honey, you better get up. Our boy's done gone, done something again. Something's going on in the temple, and they're asking for us, and so we have to go. And so they go, and they, and they get there, and then they say, um, uh, is this your son? And they're like, uh, yes, this is our son. Well, is he the one that was born blind? Yes, he's the one that the boy. Then how is it that he sees? And they're like, uh-oh, we see what's going on here. The Bible says they knew what they were doing. And so they, the Bible says that they come together and say, uh, that he is our son, and that he was born blind. Yes, that I can tell you, that is our son. He's the one that came out of my womb. That's my boy. He was born blind. How is it that he now sees? We do not know. He is of age. Ask him. In other words, she's like, don't get me involved with this. And so they, 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 they now prove that that's really the son, so they bring him back. And, and this man, can you imagine at this point, he's sitting at the jail cell of the side saying, I don't care what they tell me, I can see. You, you know, Jesus gave it to me, you can't take it from me. And he's just sitting there and they come and they, and they pull him in and they say, give glory to God and tell the truth. Give glory to God and tell the truth. Let me ask you a question when I first started sharing with you. Who said that he would give glory to God? 
Who said that? Jesus said that. Give glory to God. And tell the truth, for this man is a sinner. And so the young man who used to be blind stood up and says to the best of his theological exegetical possibility in him. He looked and says, whether he was a sinner or not, I do not know. But I know that once I was blind, and now I can see. How did he do this, they ask him. And he's like, oh, it's time to testify again. And they said, I told you already, and you didn't listen. Do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to be one of his disciples? Do you want to get saved? Do you want to, do you want to uh, also follow Jesus? And they became enraged, and they put him out the temple, and they threw him out. He was excommunicated. He was put out. He was not allowed to stay there. And he's sitting there, and Jesus comes to him and says, Jesus, here's what happens to him. And Jesus comes to him and said, do you believe in the Son of God? And he says, who is he, Lord, that I may believe? And he says, it is I. You are looking at him. And the scripture says he knelt down and he worshiped. 